Welcome to Cape Verde, on the island of Santo Antão, renowned for being a hiking paradise. If you want to see stunning landscapes and get useful tips to organize your own trip to Santo Antão, you have definitely clicked on the right video. Our adventure begins in the southern and barren part of the island, in a fisherman's village called Tarafa. Hey guys, we are in Tarafal, about to start a very good hike that will take us to Monte Trigo. Let's go! This scenic hike will take you at the foot of the Tope de Coroa volcano, the highest mountain of the island. Make sure to pack lots of water, as the sun can be unforgiving there. The landscape in this part of the island is absolutely unique, giving you the impression of being on another planet. This is what I like the most when it comes to volcanic islands. Take a look at the incredible contrast between the black of the rock and the yellow of the dry vegetation. After walking close to 13 kilometers, which took us about 5 hours, we finally reached the small village of Monte Trigo. There are no roads connecting Tarafal to Monte Trigo. Once you arrive, you can rent a fisherman's boat to take you all the way back. That is, if you don't break the boat like I did. Yes. <laughs> <'es> sérieux, là? <laughs> Ah, nada. <rire> ok. C'était quoi Je crois que j'ai marché sur l'arrivée le... <rire> des D'accord. Quel mec, il va tomber le mobile. Pas quel kilo, vous I advise you to drive on the legendary Estrada Acorda. Pardon my poor Portuguese skills. This incredible road used to be the only one that connected the south and the north of the island. After three hours of a pretty bumpy ride, we finally made it to a small town called Ponta do Sol. From there, we started a two-day trek that would ultimately take us back to Ponta do Sol. First step, cross an impressive mountain range and enjoy some spectacular views on the way up. This first hike is called Trio da Celado do Mocho. I think I butchered this name as well. Anyway, despite not being as popular as the other ones, it has been one of our very favorites as you start in a very dry landscape and end in one that is super green and lush in just a few hours. Take your time because the ascent is pretty steep. The hiking path though is incredibly well maintained, as are all hiking paths on the island. This really impressed us throughout our trip.
We finally arrived in Cozinha da Garça, where we found this amazing eco lodge to spend the night in the middle of our trek. I mean, a swimming pool with an ocean view? Wow, yes please. There is no harm in enjoying life a bit, right? Early the next morning, we started the second part of the trek back to Ponta do Sol, along a popular and scenic coastal path. This hike is a real challenge. It is 15 km long and offers some pretty steep ascents for a total of around 1000 meters of elevation. But trust me when I tell you that this one is 100% worth it. We had to make a stop to visit the remnants of what seemed like an abandoned village, still standing just meters from the shore. Just 3 kilometers before the end of the hike, the path takes you to Fontainas, which is by far the cutest village of the island. There are no roads leading to Fontainas, so the only way for you to visit this place is to hike there. My friend and I were amazed by the colorful beauty of this flowery mountain village, literally standing on a ridge, facing the ocean in the distance. Take some time to really enjoy the peaceful atmosphere of Fontainas. We then moved to Paolo Valley where we spent two nights. As you can see, we traveled a lot using the local collective taxi called Aluger. This is the type of transportation that I recommend, as it is fully part of the experience and of the fun when you are in Cape Verde. We contacted Jesus, a local guide, to take us on a hike off the beaten path. We loved it and I invite you to do the same as local guides know their island like no one else and they will lead you on paths that don't exist on any maps. Having a guide allows you to go on an exciting yet very safe adventure and to discover secret places like this incredible waterfall. We did not have one single day of rain during our stay. The weather has been amazing from start to finish. It can be quite hot in the south of the island for sure, but apart from there, the weather is great with temperatures between 25 and 28 degrees Celsius all year long. Of course, if you plan to hike, start early in the morning while the temperature is still cool. As an example, we always started our hikes around 7 in the morning. Are you enjoying this video so far? If so, please consider leaving a like and a comment, as this will really help my small channel grow. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to catch the next video.
we have saved the best for last. The famous hike of Cova de Pol, which offers, in my opinion, the most breathtaking view of Santo Anto. You can ask for a taxi to drop you off at the top of the hike and go down from there. We chose to start from the valley and hike up there first, because the landscape on the way up is absolutely fantastic early in the morning when the sun is slowly rising, as you can see. Cova de Pau is a volcanic crater, the bottom of which is serving for agriculture. Once you are up there, prepare for two long hours of steep descent. If you have weak knees like I do, make sure to strap them to avoid injury. And here it is, finally, the million dollar view as I like to call it. My friends, until we meet again in the next video, keep exploring, dreaming, and discovering the beauty that surrounds you. Oh,